Hey everyone, my name is Jose, sometimes known as Joe Engineer, and today I'm going to give you some pointers on how to set up your fuel mixture on your CIS equipped air cooled Porsche 911. Thank you once again for joining me on another uh, on another video. Uh, it looks like we're getting very very close to closing out my um, Bosch CIS K Jetronic um, uh, video series. A lot of these videos are very long and very uh, detailed and not super straightforward. But uh, I'm hoping that they've helped you set up your your. Um, very cool Porsche 911 with CIS to uh, be able to uh, maintain it yourself and get it running well and um, and to uh, you know not be afraid of this weird confusing uh, fuel system uh, it's not that bad once you get to once you wrap your head around it and uh, hopefully today uh, I'll be giving you uh, kind of one of the last uh, major uh, bits of knowledge on how to how to keep your your CIS equipped car running so on today's video, I, I plan on sharing with you how I tuned my, uh, my system. Uh, this should be applicable for all, generally for all CIS cars. And uh, in particular, this video is gonna talk about the open loop system. Uh, uh, so 1973 and a half up until 1979 is what uh what this applies to and then there will be a second video talking about the specific lambda uh tuning uh for the 1980 to 1983 cars but for now we're just that's for the closed loop system we're just going to talk about the open loop system because of how important um this is to the health of your engine i have to start this video off with um a bunch of disclaimers i'm really sorry but you know, you know how it goes nowadays. Um, so this is not a guide to help anyone pass emissions. Um, please consult a professional for um, the details on on that. These are only general guidelines to help get your CIS mixture uh, close to a point where the engine idles and runs reasonably well. Um, you will be modifying the fuel mixture in a internal combustion engine. If you make it too rich or too lean, you could cause catastrophic damage to your engine, especially if it's too lean. If you're not comfortable doing this type of mechanical work, please don't make things worse. Take it to a professional. And you know, like any of my videos, uh, I am not responsible for the outcome of your results. I'm merely demonstrating how this method worked for me and my particular car and um, uh, so please use this information at, at your own risk. So there are a bunch of prerequisites before starting uh, the process that I'm going to describe in this video and the, the prerequisites are basically all of my previous CIS videos and some of my CIS posts on my blog. Here are the major categories. Number one, you have to complete all the CIS subcomponent tests uh, and verify that everything is in working order. Every single one of these subcomponents in here has to be working in order for the whole system to work together uh, properly. Um, you have, I describe that um, component by component on my blog. I'll put a link to that article in. Um, in, in the description. You also have to complete a smoke test and eliminate all of the vacuum leaks in the system. There is a prior uh, video that I've done on this channel that goes into that, that process. You also have to complete all of the fuel pressure tests and verify that all the basic fuel pressures are within spec. There's a video for that as well. You have to adjust your valves so that your valve lash is within spec. Um, I will link a, um, a blog article that I have uh, on that process and maybe there'll be a future video on that as well. Um, you need to complete the initial fuel mixture setup 
that I outlined in a previous video in order to make sure that your engine will start. You have to set your ignition timing. I don't have a video on that um, or an article on that, I think, but um, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, I, uh, if I find a appropriate video um, done by someone else on YouTube, I'll link it in the description. You need to also set your idle um, to a good baseline. Should be idling at about 950 uh, RPM. Um, as you adjust the mixture, your idle may rise or fall and you'll have to iteratively go back and adjust it um, several times during this process. Once again, if you are not willing to do the work and complete the prerequisites that I just listed in full, to be honest, please stop watching this video um, because uh, you will not uh, be able to set your, car, your fuel mixture uh, uh, properly on this car. Um, you'll run into problems that are difficult to diagnose and you're gonna have a bad time. So um, only proceed with the remainder of this video and the, following this process if you are willing to go back and do all of the steps that I just outlined. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people have uh, hit me up for a quick shortcut fix, um, adjusting a screw or something to get their engine running properly uh, just so that they can be done and get back on the road and, and hit up a, a road rally or, or make it to their next cars and coffee. And unfortunately, this just isn't that type of a, a fuel system. You have to go through all the steps in order to, to sort it properly. So, assuming you have followed all of the prerequisites, uh, first thing you need to do is check the airflow meter uh, plate height. So, as you know, the, the, the flapper valve here on the airflow meter has a round plate, but if you remove the boot, you'll see a circular plate sitting inside of a cone-shaped Venturi. That plate needs to sit right in the center. Um, it can't be touching one of the sides of the cone and it can't be binding. It should, it should rise and fall very smoothly, just like it does here. If it is touching one of the sides, there's a bolt on top that you can loosen so you can scooch the plate over and get it centered so that it, it doesn't touch uh, any of the sides. Then you, you can lock it back down. You also need to make sure that the plate is at the correct height. And um, from below the, the plate, there is an adjustment so that you can uh, raise or lower the plate. And the plate needs to line up with the narrowest part of, of the, the cone-shaped venturi um, in the center of the airflow meter. So you wanna make sure that that's set up before you proceed. If you have Lambda, like this car does, you have to unplug the O2 sensor uh, wire in the engine compartment. So back over here, you want to unplug it so that your uh, lamp, it, so that it disables the Lambda circuit and it doesn't mess with your fuel mixture as you're trying to tune it. Next, you will need to start the car, uh, let the oil warm up to normal operating temperature. Then you set the idle to at around 950 RPM and you set the idle with the big screw on the side of the throttle body over here. Remember at this point, obviously we're trying to set up our mixture, your, our fuel mixture here, so it's not correct at the moment. Um, keep an eye on your oil temperature gauge during this process to make sure that it doesn't get warmer the normal operating temperature, just in case the car is running a little bit lean. So keep an eye on the oil temperature gauge to make sure that that doesn't happen. So once your engine is fully warmed up, your idle should be smooth. There should be no surging or popping or backfiring or any other weird noises. It should just be a nice smooth idle. Uh, typically, if it is surging, if you have a surging idle that goes up and down, up and down. That means that the mixture is a little bit too rich. If it is popping or, or making little pops or backfires, uh, that usually means that it is too lean.
remember the the airflow meter the flapper arm on the airflow meter activates the piston on the fuel distributor so it influences the uh, the fuel mixture so if you want to see if the mixture getting richer or leaner will improve the idle reach under here and move the arm if you push it up very very slightly while uh, it is running it will it will richen up the mixture a little bit if you pull down on it ever ever so slightly while it's running you will be leaning the mixture if either of those directions improves the idle uh, you want to adjust the mixture obviously in that in that direction using the adjustment screw on the fuel distributor the tiny the tiny little screw uh, described in my uh, initial fuel mixture video that sits right in between the the boot and the fuel distributor right in here and you will need to get to it using your uh, allen key uh, the special one that uh, is specific for this for this application now a fair warning here you have to make your adjustments very 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 small don't start cranking on it and, and turning it a whole bunch because the the mixture adjustment is very very sensitive um, it has a little bit of a um, if you move it a fraction of a turn it tends to kind of click it has kind of a I don't know at what degrees but at a certain partial rotation it kind of clicks so in general you want to move it you want to adjust the mixture one click at a time and recheck the idle performance by um, uh, doing your your push-pull test by um, moving the flapper arm here like I described earlier so after every adjustment give the engine a slight rev by operating the throttle body and then letting the idle kind of resettle to its its new normal at some point while you're adjusting the mixture if pushing and pulling the arm makes the idle worse in both directions then you've reached a spot where the idle mixture is right where the engine likes it and essentially this is where the mixture is as um, as rich as possible uh, without surging You have access to a CO meter, the, the tailpipe tester that reads the, the exhaust gases. Um, this is the time to dial in the emissions coming out of the tailpipe so that they can be per the factory specs. If you don't, then that's just that's where, where you will leave it. As you're making your adjustments on the um, uh, with the wrench here, using the adjustment screw. Go back and adjust your idle back to 950 using the, the big screw on the throttle body. And um, you may have, on some cars, you may have to do that every single time you uh, make an adjustment here. So this will be an iterative process back and forth where you make an adjustment, rev it, let the idle settle, and then readjust your idle. And do that over and over until you've got the mixture right where it wants to be, where it's not too rich and not too lean, so not surging, and also not popping and backfiring, and also where the idle is uh, stabilized at around 950 RPM. 
If your car does not have a, a, a lambda system, then your idle adjustment is done. Uh, at this point, go test, go test drive it and, and see how it feels. If your car is equipped with a functioning lambda, then your open loop adjustment is done and you will now proceed in another video to dial in the, the fine adjustment, um, the closed loop uh, fine adjustment on, on your particular system. So if any, if I hope this has, um, this has helped you uh, set your, your CIS. If you've gained any value from this video, please um, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe and share. Um, please support the channel any way you can. Click on any of the Amazon links that I have listed. Um, you can donate uh, to the channel through my, um, through my website. I think through the video itself, there's a, a, a donation link. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and um, hope that you have a good one. See you on the next uh, video. Thank you. Bye-bye.